ذاكرون وصلي على سيدنا محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يقولون ربنا امنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين وما لنا لا نؤمن بالله وما جاءنا من الحق ونتمع ان يدخلنا ربنا مع القوم الصالحين اللهم انا نسالك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا القران الحكيم ربنا زدنا علما اما بعد the story of the parrot and the shopkeeper we had done it once but some little more details than in more details here A certain shopkeeper kept a parrot as a pet. The parrot was green in color and had a very melodious voice. The shopkeeper had a great love for the parrot. The parrot used to speak a lot and entertain the clients in the shop. One day the shopkeeper had gone out. It so happened that a cat was trying to catch a mouse. The parrot got the impression that the cat was trying to attack him and thus fled to one side to avoid being caught. As it did so, a bottle of almond oil which was placed there fell down and the oil spilled over. When the shopkeeper came back, he noticed the oiliness on the floor mat and immediately realized that the almond oil had been spilled he became so angry that he struck the parrot on its head a number of times the act this action of his caused the parrot's head to become bald the parrot became so displeased with the shopkeeper that from that day onwards it stopped talking the parrot's silence caused the shopkeeper great anguish he was very sorry and wondered what to do in order to make the parrot speak again as its speech had provided him with great pleasure up to then for many days he tried to please the parrot through flattery but the parrot remained silent he fed the parrot with various kinds of fruit in order to make him happy but still the parrot would not speak even the clients who came to the shop were surprised at the parrot's silence and were sorry for the state of affairs one day a beggar covered in a blanket and having a bald head went past the shop on seeing the bald-headed beggar the parrot spoke in a loud voice oh bald-headed one how did you become bald you must have also caused a bottle of oil to spill over through this analogy drawn by the parrot people began laughing that the parrot had compared the bald-headed beggar to himself and had drawn such a conclusion now maulana rumi ali rahma returns to the story and gives the advice oh loved one do not compare the cases of the saintly people with yourself for although sheer and share are spelt with the same in urdu sheen ya and ra 
they are both different things sheer is milk something consumed by men and sheer is a lion an animal which consumes men the whole world is straight because of these wrong comparisons and seldom are people aware of the saints and the abdal's positions people of ill fortune are deprived of eyes which are able to perceive the truth good and evil appears the same in their eyes through their wrong analogies they have claimed equality with the prophets and at times have considered the saints as their equals and if someone objected they would say we are men and so they are we both are forced to eat and sleep so what difference is there between them and us now maulana rumi ali rahma explains that if the outer form of two things are the same then it does not necessarily mean that they are the same in all aspects he then explains the difference through a few examples one both the wasp and the bee suck nectar from the flowers both of them feed on the same thing however the wasp merely produces a poisonous sting while the bee produces sweet honey and they belong to the genus of zambur you will find two you will find two kinds of deer feeding on the same type of grass in one type of deer the grass creates dung while in the other type of deer it produces fragrant musk tree two kinds of reed are being fed with water from the same watering place the one ends up being hollow like bamboo while in the other reed that water produces sugar as in sugar cane but they are both being fed with the same water from the same watering place for an evil doing person eats bread and that bread creates within him stinginess jealousy and evil desires that same bread is also eaten by a saint but divine love and knowledge is created within him five outwardly brackish water and sweet water appear to be the same but how much different are they similarly one of ill fortune and one of good fortune appear the same when we see the outward form of a righteous one and an evil one they are the same but are they the same in their lifestyle and manners number 6 whatever a man does an ape can also do but how different is man from an ape seven in a similar manner ignorant ones have looked at miracles and compared them with sorcery a miracle is in fact from the mercy of allah which is granted to the saintly ones whereas sorcery is allah's curse which comes through the evil minded and rejected ones eight outwardly the deeds of a mu'min and a munafiq appear to be the same but in actual fact there is a vast difference between the two how great is the difference in the results of both the former leads to jannah and the latter leads to hell fire nine pure and impure gold both have the same appearance but when both of them are put to the test see how different the value of one is from the other al ibra the lesson here is that one should not compare oneself with the saints of allah look at their inner conditions of nearness to allah and contact with him which is the envy of all the kings of this world derive benefit from them and do not consider them to be like yourself the value of a container a darf depends upon its contents so is the body of man if it is honored with great contact with allah then that body is considered very precious let us take two bottles each bottle is worth a mere rupee in one bottle we fill perfume which is worth 5000 rupees and the other one we fill with water the second bottle will be worth just that one rupee while the other one will be worth 5000 rupees if urine is filled in it it will then not even be worth the one rupee 
So how can it be correct to compare the one bottle to the other? May Allah grant us the ability to honor and respect the greatness of his righteous, saintly, saintly servants and save us from drawing foolish analogies and comparisons so that we may benefit from their teachings and also acquire the eagerness to learn from them. May our wrong perceptions not be an obstacle towards acquiring benefit from them. Amin. Thumma amin. The story of the ungratefulness of Namrud in Arabic, Numrud or Namrud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once asked the angel of death, Israel alayhi salam, of all the people whose souls you had to take hold of, whom did you pity the most? Israel alayhi salam replied, over all of them, my heart is filled with grief over all of them. But in the carrying out of your orders, I submit myself. I submit myself. But over all of them, my heart is filled with grief. Allah asked, but on which occasion did your heart feel most grief? He replied, Ya Rabb, O Lord, there was one occasion when my heart was very much filled with pity and compassion. Once on your command, be Amrika, when the waves of the sea were very strong and high, we broke a boat into pieces. Then you commanded that all those on board should be drowned except one woman and her baby. All of them died except the woman and her child, who remained alive on a raft. The waves of the sea caused the raft to be driven along until the wind caused the raft to be brought near the coast. I was very pleased to see that they were near safety. Then the order came from you that the mother's soul be snatched from her while the baby should be left alone. At your command, I took the soul of the mother and the two of them were parted by death. You can well imagine how unpleasant it must have been for me. You can imagine what passed through my heart at that time. You know all that. You know all that. But I was under your command and obeyed. Who is there that can rebel against your command? No one has the right to demand the why and wherefore of your commands and decisions. To you alone is the true kingdom and decision. Israel salam, continued, Ya Rabb, O Lord, on taking the soul of the mother, I felt great, great sorrow. And to this day, I have not forgotten the helplessness of that baby and its destitution. Allah replied, now listen to what happened to that baby afterwards. Listen to how I read that child. I commanded the waves to throw that baby in such a forest where there are lilies, sweet smelling plants and fragrant flowers and where there are fruit trees and fountains bringing forth sweet waters. There I read him. Numerous birds with beautiful voices used to sing beautiful melodies in his presence. I made his bed from the leaves of the wild rose tree so that he may be safe from all trials. I commanded the sun not to shine on him with strong rays and to be considerate of him. I commanded the wind to blow over him gently and kindly. I commanded the clouds not to let the rain fall on him. Lightning was commanded not to strike him. The season of autumn was commanded not to remove the moderate weather from his garden, this garden. The result was that the garden where he lived was like the soul of the saintly ones, protected against cold, violent winds and warm, 
pestilential winds. I commanded a leopard to give this baby milk to drink. And the leopard did this until the baby grew into a grown-up child. When the time came for it to stop drinking milk, I commanded the jinns to teach him how to speak and to teach him the ways of government, the ways of governing. In this way, I read and nourished him, which was wonderful and astonishing. So is my handling strange and wonderful. I nourished the worms in the body of Nabi Ayyub, salam, and granted him such feeling for the worms, just like a father over his children. So much so that when a worm came out of his body, he used to feel as if his children were being separated from him. I gave to Ayyub feelings of sympathy like a father, acting like a host to worms without any harm to them. I taught all mothers what love is. I taught all mothers what love is. What a lamb that is which I have enlightened. What a lamb that is which I have enlightened. Thus, I show that child my numerous favors and numerous ways of my grace so that he could see my grace and generosity without adopting any means. This was done to prevent him from becoming involved with the problem of looking for the means because sometimes the causes of the means are different. Further, I did all that so that the child should in future seek help from me alone because the provider of means was not hidden behind veils and curtains. In other words, to be nourished and read without any means would entail that he should not look towards anyone else so that he should have no excuse to go astray. He will not be able to provide the excuse that by having looked at the means, he failed to pay attention to Allah's favors and bounties. But, O oh Israel, how did that child show gratitude to me? That child became Namrud, Namrud, and he was the one who wanted to burn my Khalil, Ibrahim salam alive. That was his intention. But Allah made that fire of Namrud a rose garden of safety. Now Maulana Rumi, Ali Rahma says, this nafs, this nafs, this self, is a very dangerous, dangerous enemy, Qatarnaq Dushman. One should always seek refuge from it. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri nafsi. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min shururi anfusina. For others, the nourishment by the mother and the father becomes a curtain that becomes a curtain. But this unfortunate one used to receive many pearls from us directly. This nafs is a fierce wolf. This nafs is a fierce wolf of prey. So on every friend, Will he place the blame for going astray? This I say, O poor servant of Allah, do not set free the chained dog. Do not set free the chained dog. Control the nafs. And should you be overcome, should you be overcome, develop contact with a saintly one, so that through his company and dua you may succeed. But search for such a guide who is awake in all situations so that you too may become awake and if you should remain in the company of the vanquished you too will become vanquished in other words as is the company you keep so will be the effects upon you as the company is like a seed it's a seed whatever seeds you sow whatever seeds you plant so will be the trees that will grow the wisdom of Hazrat Luqman ala nabina wa alayhi salatu was salam. The story is told that when Luqman alayhi salam's master bought him, the other slaves 
looked upon him as being despicable. One day the master sent all of them into the garden to pick fruit. All the slaves started eating the fruit. They ate to their heart's delight and went to inform the master that Hazrat Luqman salam, had eaten the fruit. This made the master very much displeased with Luqman alayhi salam. Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam advised the master, please investigate this matter thoroughly. I did not eat the fruit. I will tell you of a plan which will prove who the culprits were. The whole truth will become clear to you. Make preparations for hunting. From the stable, the master ordered that horses be brought. The master sat down on his horse. Hazrat Luqman salam then said, Proceed speedily in the direction of the desert. But before you proceed, give every one of the slaves warm water to drink. Let everyone drink himself to the full with warm water. Very soon you will discover who the real culprits are. The result was that when those who had eaten the fruit were forced to run along, the quick movements caused them to start vomiting. That was because after drinking hot water, the fast movements caused their stomachs to become even more heated. Moreover, the path they trod which led to the desert was an uneven one with ups and downs. This made vomiting unavoidable. In the vomit, the signs of their having eaten the fruit was quite clear because the time which passed since they had eaten was too short for the fruit to be digested. Hazrat Luqman salam, did not vomit as there was no fruit in his stomach. True, the wise plan of Hazrat Luqman salam, all the slaves were put to shame and were embarrassed. The master became very pleased with the wisdom of the plan and as a result, Luqman salam, became a favorite of the master. Maulana Rumi Ali Rahma says, when such is the wisdom of Luqman. When such is the wisdom of Luqman, salam, imagine the wisdom of the true master of all, Al-Hakim. Imagine the wisdom of the true master of all, Al-Hakim. The story of the acceptance of Ah. Oh. A certain saintly man used to always perform his salat with jama'ah in the masjid. One day, as usual, he went to the masjid for salah. As he reached the door of the masjid, he heard the voice of the imam saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Indicating that the congregational salah had ended. Realizing that he had missed the congregational salah, the pious man was so filled with sorrow that he sighed, Ah. It was such a sigh that came right from the depths of his heart. The saintly man missed the jama'at and ah was uttered in sorrow and in his ah, the blood of his heart could be smelt. Inside the masjid, there was another saintly one who had a spiritual light, who had a spiritual sight, sorry, basirat. When he came out of the masjid, he saw a shining light. So inside the mosque, there was another saintly one who had a spiritual sight. When he came out of the masjid, he saw a shining light, which went right up to the throne of Allah. He discovered that the nur was the sigh of the person who had missed the congregational prayer. He sent to the pious one, Hazrat, Give me that ah, and in exchange, accept my salah, which was performed with the jama'ah. The saint did not at the time understand the real value of his ah, and exchanged it for the salat with jama'at. That night, the other saint saw a dream, wherein a voice from the heaven said to him, O oh man, a voice from the heaven said to him in the dream, O oh man, you have purchased and acquired the water of life. 
the water of health and have made a very good exchange in getting that ah, because that sigh was uttered in the fullest sincerity. You have purchased, O oh man, and acquired the water of life, the water of health, and have made a very good exchange in getting that ah, because that sigh was uttered in the fullest sincerity. That night a messenger from on high brought the message that through that transaction he had acquired the water of life and the water of health and said, through this transaction that you have made, Allah has accepted the salahs of all mankind of the present time. Lesson. From the story, we learn the following things. Number one. One should not look down upon anyone. Don't look down upon anyone. Sometimes even a great sinner repents so sincerely with such a presence of heart and in such a heart-rending manner that his repentance, this repentance of his becomes superior to all his other deeds. With the result that we do not know from where to where he reaches. Maulana says, Tauba, repentance, is a strange means of conveyance. What a strange form of transport is this Tauba. It causes one to reach speedily from humbleness and lowliness up to acceptance and great, great heights. Tauba. Two, from this we also learn that when there are shortcomings and faults in our deeds, we should have sorrow, grief, and remorse, and we should cry before Allah, seeking forgiveness and pardon. In the story, in the story, all that was included in one ah. From this story, number three, we also learn the importance of performing our salah together with the jama'at. This, and the last story for today, the story about the different opinions on an elephant. In a certain country, no one had ever seen an elephant. From India, the first elephant was brought to this country. It was placed in a dark building where the eyes could not see the dark colored elephant. Many viewers came along to see the animal. It was placed in a dark building where the eyes could not see the dark colored elephant. Many viewers came along to see the animal. They were allowed to touch the elephant and then draw conclusions as to what an elephant was. According to which part of the elephant they had touched, they drew their conclusions by chaos, analogy, and in this manner, each one had a different opinion. The one who touched the earlobes of the elephant exclaimed, the elephant was like a huge fan. The one who touched its back exclaimed, the elephant is like a platform. The one who touched its leg exclaimed, no, you are all wrong. This is like a pillar. The one who touched the trunk of the elephant said, According to my opinion, this elephant is long and hollow within. So in this manner, all of them had different versions of an elephant. Maulana Rumi, alayhi rahma, now says that if in their hands they had a lamp, all these differences of opinion would have disappeared. If every one of them had a lamp in his hand, they would all have been safe from differing. The lesson, these days, there are much differences of opinion, iktilaf in this world. Regarding the concept of Allah, messengership, nubuwat, prophethood, risalat, aim and the object of life on earth, resurrection, many people in this darkened world Independent of the light of revelation, try to understand the links between the worldly life and the life of the Akira. 
what link is there? They try to understand the relationship between Khalik and Makhluk, the creator and his creation, simply and only by using reason and powers, or who try to understand these things through the reason of him who does not rely on revelation. They are all like those mentioned in this story. Not one of them will be able to reach the truth. One blind man, whether he tries to tread the path of his own accord, whether he tries to tread the path of his own accord, or through following another blind one, in both cases, he'll be treading downwards, he'll be treading towards destruction, and be deprived of reaching the required destination. If a traveler and guide are blind, no matter how many they may be, the sum total will still be blindness. The sum total will still be blindness. Hence, to understand the reality of things, logic and reason alone is not enough. Light of revelation is also required. In the story, all those who touched the elephant were rational beings. Only light was missing. Thus, Muslims should not look towards men of science and philosophy to research the affairs of the Akira and to fix the object of human life on earth here. Those men of science and philosophy lack the light of revelation and as such they will conclude that man is just a machine which manufactures feces. They will conclude that the object of this life is merely to eat, drink, and exude feces, nothing else. The light to which we refer is divine revelation. It is the Holy Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The light is the same which was revealed in Gari Hira, the cave of Hira, 1400 years ago. May Allah protect us from any modern light. Oh, new light. May your face be blackened, O oh new light. In your heart is darkness and your outside is enlightened. Still have one, this is a short story, we'll do this also too. The vain imagination of a fly. A donkey urinated in a certain place. The urine was so much that as it flowed away, blades of grass started flowing with the urine. A fly sat on one of the dry blades of grass. A fly sat on one of the dry blades of grass as it flowed away on top of the urine. He felt as if he was sailing and sailing along on the ocean and imagined the flowing blade of grass to be his boat. In comparison with other flies, he felt himself to be superior. Never before did he feel this superiority. He felt inclined to announce his superiority and high rank and he said, a fly on a blade of grass sailing along in a donkey's urine like a ship shakes his head and announces, I have studied the sea and sailed my boat and in the study have I spent quite a time. Maulana Rumi explains, alayhi rahmah, just as this fly is involved with a greatly foolish notion, similarly is the case of the misguided intellig intelligentsia of our age, who term their imaginations and wrong thoughts to be research. They consider it insulting and humiliating for them to derive benefit from divine revelation. They consider it perfect to invite humanity to those false ideologies. Molana Rumi, Ali Rahma, gives advice to those stupid ones. He who with his wrong interpretations turn away from divine revelation is like that fly on the blade of grass sailing along in the donkey's urine. He who with his wrong interpretations and his van 
turn away from divine revelation. He who with his wrong interpretations turn away from divine revelation is like that fly on the blade of grass sailing along in the donkey's urine. This person looks upon his imagination and ideas as his saving grace and means of success and even tries to make divine revelation subject to his own opinions, his own rai, a tafsir bir rai. At every step he is one to say, I think this or I think that. My opinion is this. He goes so far as to pass judgment from his opinions on those things in deen on which there is ijma, general consensus of agreement. And those things which are proven through continuous, authentic transmission, yet he wants to put his own views, opinions in that. He even wants to impose his views over the judgments of Sahaba and their beliefs. Such a person is in the same boat as the fly in this story. Such a person is like the fly flowing along on a blade of grass in the urine of a donkey imagining that he is such an expert sailor. What an expert sailor am I? Thereafter, Maulana Rumi Ali Rahma shows the way how such a person can reform himself. If the fly does not enter wrong interpretation into his opinion and repent from wrong interpretations, fate will make that fly become blessed, inshallah. In other words, the fly will become so full of blessings that he will be saved from having to sit on feces and from being mixed with impurities. He will then enter the ranks of the pure ones. The author of these lines say, says that Maulana's reference in this couplet is to the Quranic verse in then conjecture, rai, opinion, avails nothing against that which is haq. And the verse, and follow the path, follow the path of him who returns in repentance to me. Follow the path of him who returns in repentance to me. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanakallah wa bihamdik Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Social expectation Drowns us all inside What you have should be what I want Cause what I have just ain't alright the clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair How I live, oh, I don't care This is who I am, this is me